estás? Porque yo no tan bien. Don't worry, I'm actually doing pretty good right now, but that's definitely not always the case. And I do happen to be the type of person who likes to be real when answering ¿Cómo estás? Are you? In case you are, here are six alternatives for you to say you are no tan bien. I'm Maura from Spring Spanish, and here is your first alternative. Número uno, adjectives. ¿Y tú cómo estás? ¿Qué tal todo? Malísimo. Terrible. Horrible. So, malísimo, terrible, y horrible are just adjectives, but very good adjectives to describe how you feel, especially if you feel particularly bad. On their own, these little words are powerful, and more than enough to be a full answer. Malísimo is actually the superlativo, meaning the exaggeration of mal, which you could also use if you don't want to be as empathic. Terrible and horrible are pretty strong as they are. Also, quite easy to remember if you speak English because they are rather similar to the word in Spanish. Actually, the spelling is exactly the same. Sin embargo, hay que trabajar en el sonido de la R para usarlos. But please don't worry about that. Like, when I was a little girl, I couldn't make this sound and my mom had to get a speech therapist to help me out with it. And I'm a native, so don't sweat it. And if you stick around till the end, you can get one more alternative that would definitely impress natives if you use it because it is 100% insider slang. Número dos, más o menos. ¿Y tú cómo estás? ¿Qué tal todo? Más o menos. ¿Por qué? ¿Pasó algo malo? Malo es poco. Más o menos can work for many things. It can also be an answer to te gusta or entiendes, as well as anything that asks about the intensity of something, like está caliente or está picante. In general, if your answer is más o menos, you're staying in the middle. Specifically, if you're answering this to cómo estás, it does incline more to the negative side. Meaning, if you weren't doing at least a little bit bad, you wouldn't say this. <laughs> chunk! Malo es poco is a chunk you could possibly use in this context to specify that something, in this case malo, is too small to describe how you feel or what happened. It doesn't have to be something bad though. This es poco works after any other adjective, like bueno es poco. Frío es poco. Difícil es poco. Remember to check the link in the description to access our free essential Spanish chunking kit. Decir que es útil es poco. Número 3. Regular. ¿Y tú cómo estás? ¿Qué tal todo? Regular. ¿Por qué? ¿Pasó algo malo? So, this regular might be a Venezuelan thing. I'm not quite sure if they use it in other regions as much as we do, para ser honesta. That being said, it's almost its last definition in the dictionary, but you can certainly find it to be defined as no tan bien. It's quite similar to más o menos in the sense that, though it might seem you're not doing that bad when you say this, it actually means you're doing at least a little bad. Y como siempre esperamos que los demás estén bien, it is enough to come out as a declaration of feeling at least somewhat bad. Número cuatro. Ay, ay. Time for that slang. ¿Y tú cómo estás? ¿Qué tal todo? Hmm, ay, ay. Cuidado con la traducción de este porque puede ser confusa. Also, pay attention to the intention with which you say this because it will make a difference. Ahí, ahí is quite light. It'll never make someone think you're doing horrible. But that's when the intonation comes into play. You can say ahí, ahí in an even lighter tone and make it seem as if nothing too good or too bad is happening. Or you can keep it heavier like it did in the role play. Mm, ay, ay. and signal something annoying is happening. 
This is Lang and I'm Venezuelan. So, dudo que alguien más lo use además de nosotros. Nonetheless, I would never hesitate to use this when answering ¿Cómo estás? I trust that the right context and the right intonation will take care of the comprehension part, no matter where the other Spanish speaker is from. Ahora que tienes unas cuantas opciones más para especificar cómo te sientes, vamos a repasarlas juntos. If you're doing very, very bad, you can use any of the following on their own. Horrible. Terrible. Malísimo. If you're at least a little bit bad, you can use más o menos, which you can use to be actually neutral about the intensity of many things. And regular, which might only be a Venezuelan thing. If you're fine but something annoying is happening, you can use ay ay. Remember, tone plays a bigger role in this one than the others. Now you know what to answer if you don't feel well. But what if you do feel well? You can say, estoy bien, or any of the other eight alternatives Maria Fernanda has prepared for you here. <laughs> 